Hello, and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on a Think Tech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, and I am your host for this program. Today, I am excited to introduce our guest on the show, Executive Director for Aloha Harvest, Brandon Tumita. Brandon, thank you for being on the show. Kathleen, thank you for having me. Of course. Tell our viewers about yourself. Um, all right. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Brandon. As you mentioned, I'm the Executive Director of Aloha Harvest. Uh, for anyone who does not know what Aloha Harvest is, first of all, I don't blame you. Um, but we are the largest uh, food rescue and redistribution uh, company uh, in Hawaii. Uh, we are serving the island of Oahu, uh, and we're actually in our 25th year of operation. So we started in 1999, uh, the Haoli Maloa Foundation and Bob Harrison with First Hawaiian Bank um, really got us started. Um, what we do as a food rescue company is we get food uh, that would otherwise you know, go to waste uh, from your sources that could be a store, uh, that could be a restaurant, that could be a farm. Uh, we get that food and we get it over to a recipient agency. These agencies could be anything from a church, a nonprofit, a food pantry, uh, anyone who's going to help us get that food uh, into the uh, hands of the community that needs it. Um, so overall, our mission is two part. Uh, number one, reduce waste. And number two, work on increasing food security. I think that is wonderful. And before I delve into that further, I understand that it's been a few months since you got into the position. Um, where were you before that? And how are you bringing in your previous leadership experiences into this new executive director position? Yeah, I uh, started with Aloha Harvest uh, October 30th of last year. Um, so now I think it's been about, it's going to be about four months, somewhere around there, if, I, if I'm doing the math correctly. Uh, prior to this, I was the Chief Operating Officer of Wahiwa General Hospital. Uh, I had been there um, about four and a half years, uh, started right before COVID. Um, and of course, obviously COVID, you know, brings in this time warp where you feel like you've been there forever. Um, but what I do bring with, um, you know, having past experience in a small um, entity that uh, faces some of the same issues that all of us in the nonprofit arena currently are facing. Um, number one is being able to operate in an arena that is a bit chaotic and a bit uncertain, uh, especially around finances. Um, I joined Wahiwa General, um, and you know, it's no secret that Wahiwa itself had been um, really struggling financially for a number of years prior to me joining. Um, a lot of the nonprofits right now, because of you know unforeseen circumstances, do sort of face a kind of uncertain financial situation, um, you know, through this next year or so, uh, potentially even further. Um, and so I think that kind of um, uh, ability to scramble and make do with what you have and, and you know, really kind of fight through, um, I think that's going to be a, a big push there. Um, but really what I do bring from the healthcare side that I would like to see us incorporate in Aloha Harvest is the integration of food security and overall um, connection to health. Um, you know, coming from healthcare uh, as a nonprofit, you are um, required every three years to do a community health needs assessment. And in Hawaii, we have the benefit of having a really good association that helps lead all of the hospitals through that process. Um, through COVID, you know, the number one concern, I believe the number one concern um, was actually food insecurity. And, you know, that's obviously something that um, we're addressing um, as a healthcare provider, though, as a hospital, as a doctor's office. Um, your focus really is to get that, that patient, that customer treated and, and back into the community. You don't really have that ability to really kind of work on some of these um, social needs. And so I think that's the part that um, I'm most interested in. Um, you know, we have a number of different programs at Aloha Harvest. Um, I would like to see how we can work more closely with the healthcare um, coalition, the, the healthcare community, uh, to really address some of these needs of their patients. I, I think that's great that you, you have that background and you have that goal. For 
people that may want to have a clear definition of what food security or what food insecurity is, you, you can <laughs> you can take that either way. What is food security? What is food insecurity? And like, who does it affect? Mm -hmm. I think the simplest way to put it, um, food security is not having the fear that you're not going to be able to get a meal, right? I mean, that that's about as, as simple as we can state. Um, who it's affecting, it's not just those who are, um, you know, the, the houseless community or those who are really in that poverty line. Um, through COVID, we've really seen um, an increased demand in food supplies and foodstuffs. Um, coming from the, you know, kind of reaching even into the middle class. Um, the uh, Aloha United Way has their Alice Drive, and, and I'm, I'm going to try and struggle through to get the acronym correct. Um, but essentially, th these are um, families who are working, but still can't make all those ends meet. Um, that, you know, getting to that point where you have these uh, citizens, residents, you know, community members, family members, who are just at that tipping point, you know, and, and really are seeking that, um, what your basic necessities are, if they are, you know, pushed over towards the, um, you know, further down that that poverty um, line or poverty rating, you could see this, this bigger push into the houseless community, into those who are really struggling. Um, so that's what we're trying to work um, to, you know, prevent. Um, working with our partners in the community, um, yeah, that's about, you know, there's a lot of different definitions, but to me, that's the, the easiest way to define food security, food insecurity. Do you have the fear of being able to get your next meal? How is, how is the food source? What is the process? I know one of the goals is to minimize food waste because mm -hmm. you mentioned before in a previous conversation that we had, um, like earlier this week, you mentioned that there there is a lot of food waste, and and the organization is trying to um, address that by using it, by not by making sure that food doesn't go to waste and is used uh, in a better manner, in, in a way that helps out people who may need it. So, what is the process like? How is it vetted? You know, right. So. There's different avenues to have food wasted. And unfortunately, one of the biggest ways, and, and you know, I'll, I'll be the first to admit, I, I do fall into this area as well. Um, you go to Costco and you buy this gigantic bag of, of whatever it is that you're gonna get, you know, a bag of spinach, uh, a bag of lettuce, um, and you have every intention when you're in the store to um, you know, consume all of it. Um, but you know, things happen and you realize oh, it, it's been in my fridge for a while. I take a look at it and now it's spoiled and I, I can't use it, so I toss it out. Um, that's generally going to be your biggest source of food waste. And, you know, the, the way to try to prevent that is to try and, you know, obviously consume what you buy, but, um, you know, find the partner that you can um, share a cost with or um, even, you know, don't, don't buy the gigantic bag of spinach if you, you know, you're not really going to eat it. Um, buy a, maybe a smaller bag at a different store. Um, what we are generally working with in, in our arena is um, larger stores um, will have stock that is you know hit, about to hit their best uh, sell-by date, your best buy date, your sell-by date. Um, and they know that they're going to have to rotate that stock out because there's more shipments coming in. And if people don't buy it, you know, it's going to be um, it is going to go to waste. And, and so that's a, a good source right there that we can get. Um, you have other avenues of this. So let's say a restaurant. Um, your restaurants could, you know, create a buffet line. And so you have these foods that are prepared. Um, and then at the end of the night, they realize that they didn't put out, you know, X number of trays, um, X number of items. Um, that's a food item that we can take and get to one of our recipient agencies. Um, you also have a farm. You have farms or even residents. Okay? We, we do have a community harvest program, which um, the small scale gleaning. Um, you could have a tree of avocado and, you know, you have 100 avocados every day on your yard and you don't really know what to do with them. Um, farms have this on a larger scale, right? They, they may not have either the time or the labor to pick some of these items. Um, we can go ahead and help that out too. Glean these items, get it, get it over to recipient agencies. Um, so there are different avenues that we can get. 
Obviously, the restaurant prepared food route um, brings a little bit more risk, and there are steps in place to make sure that the food doesn't get out of that window to where the food is unsafe. Um, there are, for us, um, the benefit is we've always had a protection um, to, you know, liability-wise, there's a, a good Samaritan law in place. If we are, if a donor is giving the food in, best, in their, you know, um, uh, best efforts, um, we can take it, we can get it to our recipient agency, to the community, um, and we're protected from the liabilities there. Um, the Biden administration has actually expanded that protection um, over to even um, a person-to-person -person type interaction, um, you know, in an effort to reduce waste and, and to address food security as well. Um, so there are liabilities uh, in place there. Understandably, some um, larger entities are a little bit concerned, even though that that you know that laws on the books that they would be. Um, held liable for anything that should go wrong down the line. So we do work with them as much as we can to, to uh, put them at ease that, you know, we do follow steps to make sure that everything is safe throughout that, that process. And, and you, your organization does not store the food. Is that correct? So then you, so how does that scheduling work? You talk to um, the donors or the, the organizations that you work with and you figure out how that, like how pickup works? Yeah, sometimes it's going to be um, frantic uh, phone calls and and or texts uh, back and forth saying, "Hey, there's this you know food available. Um, it's it's coming this afternoon. Can you guys take it? Yes or no? You know, and 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 it's a uh, it's a work that I really got to give it up to our ops team um, coordinating that. Um, sometimes it's a little bit more controlled than that. Um, those who have donated and are used to our process. Um, we do give them um, aluminum trays that they can go ahead and pack that food in, cold store it in their facility, and then we can pick it up the next day, um, which is one of the reasons why, um, besides fuel and labor, uh, one of our largest costs uh, is aluminum trays. Um, not even kidding. Um, we spend, uh, I believe last year was somewhere in the arena of, of twenty dollars to $30,000 in aluminum trays, um, trays and lids. Um, so that, that comes in and it goes out um, pretty frequently to be able to collect this food item and, and get it out to our partners. So there's a, and you just made me think about this now, there's a a good amount of unpredictability when it comes to getting food in to disperse to those in need. Is that kind of where we're going or... There can be. Um, fortunately, I think, you know, we've had uh, our ops manager has been in place now for 13 years. Um, so as far as unpredictable, they've you know seen everything. And so I think the unpredictable can be sort of predictable. Um, what does help is there are a number of recipient agencies who have worked with us um, for so long, and they basically will say yes to anything. You know, they'll They'll say, "Hey, yeah, bring it over. We'll we'll figure it out." Um, and so that that is really helpful. Um, I myself did get to experience this. Um, there was a pickup. Uh, it was supposed to be about eleven thirty at night. It, it turned out to be about ten thirty, which wasn't so bad. Um, and they were, you know, it was five minutes around the corner. Dropped it off to them, and they were more than happy to take it. So yeah, it's helpful to have people who have already been through the process, and and really helps it go smoothly. Um, but yeah, uh, there. At the times where it is unpredictable, um, if not our routes, we do depend on you know a large number of volunteers to be able to help you know kind of pick up and and deliver these items um, to the community. So that that's really helpful. You mentioned earlier restaurants and there's also hotels and like wholesale distributors. If if there were families or even individuals that wanted to donate, is there a process for that? Or is it just um, the wholesalers or the much larger organizations that you take food, food from? We actually do get a lot of um, even walk-in donations. Um, so at any given point, you know, I'll, I'll be in my office and I hear the, um, you know, the uh, elevator door open and someone comes down and they go ahead and they walk in with a bag of something and, you know, we're more than happy to take it. Sometimes it, it could even be like, um, something you don't eat, like um, body wash or, or slippers or whatnot. Um, we do work with so many different community agencies that we'll just take whatever and, and hand it off and they'll be able to figure out, you know, what to do with it. 
Um, but yeah, if it's a pickup, um, you know, our rule is going to be, hey, if you're going to um, call us to come pick it up, um, we, we do want to make sure that it's at least five pounds to make it <laughs> worth, worth the, the, the trip out there because uh, it is a, a you know, fuel and, and labor cost initiative. But um, we really do appreciate even the, the small individual giving um, because it all adds up. You know, we've um, as of January, uh, we rescued our um, 35 million pounds, um, rescued and redistributed 35 million pounds worth of food wow. now over the um, last 25 years. Um, and that really, uh, the, the rate of rescue really picked up during COVID. Um, so prior to that, you know, it had been a much smaller organization. And then uh, my predecessor actually helped grow kind of the operation um, over the last four or five years. What type of food do, does your organization take in or don't take it? Wait, is there a criteria for what you can accept as donations? We actually um, take in a lot of produce, um, a lot of packaged goods, obviously, because these are things that are going to be, you know, kind of moving in and out of stores um, pretty quickly. Um, during COVID, we saw a lot of eggs, a lot of milk, a lot of um, produce like bananas or oranges or potatoes, things like that. Um, which were essential to get out to the community. Um, so the the good side, bad side of that, it's great that we were getting these items, but it's bad because it meant the stores just couldn't get that inventory out, right? So they're struggling on that side. Um, there isn't too much that we don't take. Um, there's even times where I, I look at an item that comes in and I'm, I'm saying, I'm not even sure what this is. What, what do we do with this? You know, um, and uh, we'll we'll again work with the community to try and figure out you know where things go. So if we get something like an exotic spice or, or some kind of food item that uh, you know I'm not too familiar with, we kind of ask around first. You know, what would you do with this? Um, you know, who could we possibly contact for this item and, and see if they'll take it? Um, and if not, we do you know kind of end up holding a couple of things until we can figure out the match for it. That's actually good to know because I, in my head, I'm thinking it's mostly just produce, like you said, but I was unsure how your organization takes in meat or sure. even like not necessarily junk food, but, but snacks that are packed. Is that even, you know, like how does that get distributed? Especially yeah. like, and it's good that you pointed out that there is a, a five pound minimum in order for your staff to go over and pick up those items to be dispersed to those who um, do need it. Yeah, um, we do. Uh, recently, we had a pretty large donation um, from one of our partners of candy. Um, I think it was like, you know, kind of getting that Halloween stock out and getting ready for, you know, the next wave coming in. Um, and so we're sitting on pallets of candy. Uh, and I was kind of laughing with our operations team. I said, you know, we're, what do we do with all this? We, 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 we have just probably the, the most amount of candy, you know, I've ever seen, you know, and, and uh, who do we, who do we give this to? And, and really um, what kind of, what kind of blowback people come back to us as we try and work on health and here we are handing out just, just boxes of candy. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if, if it's donated, we'll, we'll find a way to, to get it out there. Yeah, I, I absolutely appreciate that. I think I already asked about how you did it. I, did I already ask about how you vet it? Like, is there an official vetting? Is there a checklist? Um, we do, especially for the um, the prepared foods. If it is stock food, we have kind of a general guideline of what would be acceptable, what would be, what would not be. So as we look through some of the, especially donated from an individual, if the container is open, um, we're probably not going to take it. Um, if the container, if it's a can item and it looks unsafe, you know, it's bulgy and it, it's rusty. Um, again, we'll probably not take, oh, we'll take it and just, you know, throw it out. Um, items that are open are always going to be risky. So we'll take a look at that. If there's anything that looks obviously wrong, um, you know, if you do bring in some kind of meat item and it's, you know, green when it should be red, then that's obviously a concern. Um, we'll probably dispose of that as well. Um, so yeah, most of it is, is you know, kind of your basic step-by-step -step food safety. Um, prepared foods, again, a little bit more um uh you know kind of given guidelines restaurant industry is very familiar with that you have that four-hour window to make sure your attempts are in control 
Um, and one thing I, I you know, kind of want to make sure we get in there, um, we are, I think I spoke with this earlier, um, we are now starting to rescue fish. Um, and this is fresh caught fish. Um, it's slowly hitting the news, but we've been working on this for a little bit now to get um, fish from United Fishing Agency um, in partnership with the Hawaii Longline Association and Fresh Island Fish Company. Um, getting fish you know, from the auction site, fish that, that would otherwise potentially be wasted because it's not sold, um, getting that out to our partners in the community, um, very exciting uh, to get this uh, project underway. Um, and again, it's going to come with an um, you know, increased risk, making sure temperatures are in control, um, making sure waste streams are considered because you have this whole fish going to a partner now. Can you handle this fish? Uh, you know, first of all, can you cut it up and prepare it? And if we give you a large volume, can you handle that? And can you, you know, responsibly get rid of whatever's left over from the fish? Um, so yeah, we're, we're just starting. Um, really excited to get this on the way. Um, so yeah, that, that's another one where we're going to have to um, make sure we dot I's and cross T's as we get this project going. Yeah, that was my next question. New initiatives. Right. Um, aside from uh, that, are there any other initiatives that you want to mention? Um, you know, as I mentioned kind of at the top, um, coming from healthcare, having that background, uh, I would like to start to look at how we can work closely with some of our partners in the community. Um, like we we're saying uh, with hospitals, you don't always have that knowledge or ability of what's out there, right? Knowledge of what's out there, ability to point them in the right direction um, to a service provider. If your patient says, yes, I am concerned about my next meal, um, I am food insecure. Um, so having that kind of uh, on, on my checklist of things I wanna get done, um, that's gonna be the next initiative. Um, one of the other large projects that we are working on is we have a USDA grant. Um, this is for our Oahu Food Resilience Hub. Um, basically, what our long-term goal is, is to get a um, large warehouse space. Um, so like we talked about, you know, it's usually a mad scramble if something suddenly comes up, um, takes a little bit of that away. Um, we would have the ability to store um, larger volumes of food, um, make more equitable, more efficient decisions, uh, and then possibly also get more involved in the emergency management apparatus um, for our, um, definitely for our island, because um, we are we're Oahu based, um, but overall being able to help you know um, manage any sort of food distribution needs in the event of a hurricane, a fire, a tsunami. Um, anything of that nature. Um, so that is an upcoming project as well. Um, we're kind of step-by-step getting there. You've kind of already touched upon your, you know, your goals and the initiatives that you want to see while you're there and what you brought in. Like, let me just simplify one of my last questions. What is your why? Why did you choose to head this organization? You know, there's three uh, three parts to why I chose um, Aloha Harvest. Uh, number one, for myself, personally, as a professional, um, I wanted a company, you know, as the executive director, um, I answered directly to the board. And so having that board relationship um, is important. And this board is a um, young slash youngish um, board. Um, very good intentions, you know, very, uh, um, the, 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 response to me actually saying, yeah, I'm going to come over um, was a reason. That, and I, I, you know, told our chair of this, I said, hey, your response to me coming over is, is why I, I would choose here, right? It, it's, a, it's a good fit. It's a good relationship. Um, but number two uh, is the mission. And our mission is one that is appreciated. It's you're rescuing quality food to nourish and sustain the community. Um, that's something that, you know, it, it's very much appreciated. Uh, the company has good brand equity with almost everybody in food service. And I do have a lot of friends in food service. So my food service friends know what this is. Um, even if most of my other friends are like, what's Aloha Harvest? Um, number three is the people who are here. Um, you know, they have, a lot of them have been here um, for years and have really, uh, you know, put their heart and soul into this company. 
Um, it's a small company. Um, we have, um, you know, 16, 17 employees total. Um, and so it, it's a combination of all three of those that made this a good fit um, at this point in my career. Thank you for sharing that. Is there anything else that you would like to add that we may not have gone over in the few minutes that we have left? Yeah, um, you know, I, uh, you know, we had a chance. Um, obviously, that's where we first met. Um, we were fortunate to be a part of the Giving Machine campaign. Uh, we're very thankful for that. And as a part of my little um, two-minute, you know, kind of speech to the room, uh, my 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 main focus was to ask, how can we help? Um, and that's something I think that's going to be critically important. You know, my my time with Wahiwa, um, we knew that we couldn't compete with all the big systems. Um, you know, we just didn't have those resources. Uh, we knew that our part in there was helping as much as we can with what we had. Um, so how can we provide service to the rest of you to make sure that the coalition benefited? Um, that's the same question we have now. As we enter this time of uncertainty, um, how can we help? How can we work with you, the other nonprofits that are out there, um, or even for-profits, just depending on what their mission is? How can we help um, you know, benefit our community? Um, our vision is, of course, a resilient and sustainable Hawaii where food hunger and, and uh, food waste and hunger no longer exist. So how can we help achieve that? That's wonderful. If people want to learn more about Aloha Harvest, where could they go? So fortunately I have here in front of me our website. Uh, we are alohaharvest.org, pretty straightforward. Um, and I believe our social is at Aloha Harvest. So depending on, on how you get your news or information, um, Aloha Harvest will pop up, you know, if you, if you go ahead and put that in uh, your search. Um, that's going to be the easiest way. We have our data, we have our reports, we have all our contact information on there. Um, we usually guide people to our website because it has a pretty thorough view of our company. Um, and of course, if there's anyone in the, I'll, I'll say it, the younger generation who are um, more geared towards, um, you know, Instagram or, or whatnot, um, yeah, at, at Aloha Harvest. Young-ish. Young Are we part of that? Are we young-ish? Uh, you know, I, I would have said yes, but uh, I think day by day, I'm I'm starting to realize no. The answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> well, Brandon, thank you for being here today for our viewers. We just had Brandon Tomita, Executive Director of Aloha Harvest on the show. Thank you. Thank you again for being on today. And thank you to Think Tech Hawaii as well for making shows like this possible. Um, thank you to Jay Fidel, Karen Mon Lee, Mike, who helped us out, and Haley. Until next time, aloha.